this episode of Bachelor Party, we just got to circle back on some of the crazier parts of Tuesday's episode, plus some pretty juicy tidbits and great speculation from Nick Vial. Let's do it. Let's batch. This episode is brought to you by Visible. Maybe you've already let your New Year's resolution slip. We all have, but you can still make a two years resolution with Visible. Right now, you can get a one-line wireless plan from Visible for just $20 per month for 24 months. 24 months is basically four bachelor seasons. That could be four engagements, four broken engagements, so many other couples we didn't see them coming. It's really an eternity in Bachelor Nation. And that's unlimited 5G data powered by Verizon with no annual contracts. Switch now at Visible.com and use the code Visible24. Don't miss out. Offer ends January 31st. New members only. Promotional rate with service on the Visible plan. For additional terms and network management practices, see Visible.com. This episode is brought to you by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. All right, it's official. I think I've discovered the ultimate coupling of all time. Like any good relationship, they really balance each other out. One is super sweet, and the other... Well, they can be a little nutty sometimes. It is, of course, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, the perfect combination of peanut butter and chocolate. So perfect, some would call it true love. Find Reese's now at a store near you. Welcome to Bachelor Party. I'm Juliette Lippman. I wanted to talk about Claire's season with someone who's been unafraid to jump into the fray and the convo and also joins me in being over the age of 30. Hello, Nick Vial. Hello, Julia. How are you? <laughs> Julia? What the fuck? Sure, sure. Sorry. <laughs> Nick. Ouch. Juliet. Ouch. Just, ouch. This is my fourth podcast today. It is? Yeah. Wow. What else did you do? I did my Patreon, Nick V uh, Talks Trash TV. I did an episode of that. I, then I had Teddy Mellencamp uh, on my my podcast. And then I did an episode of Ask Nick where we had a Julia as one of the callers. I see. Okay. What's your, <laughs> when's your book coming out, man? Uh, not for, till like 2022, I think. Oh, okay. Post-pandemic, hopefully. I'm, I'm st- still writing it. Yeah. This is my only podcast of the day, but I did think to myself at one point today, are we living in an alternate reality? And then I started looking at gifts of Lost, where I was just thinking, like, are we on the island? Like, is is our America on some kind of island where there's a pandemic and there's like an alternate reality going on? So that's what that's where I'm at. In case you're wondering, that's entirely possible. <laughs> um, I want to and in about- that and in that world, you're Julia. No, I will never <laughs> be Julia. It's a fine name. It's just not my name. No, um, I know. It's I actually like Julia better. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I want to talk about Claire's season with you. I'm eager to get your take on a few things. I just want to um, correct one thing that we got wrong on a uh, previous episode this week. In the uh, bloopers, the, the, the credit scene with Bennett going to do the tour of the um, room, we said it was easy he went over to Bennett's room for the tour, but actually it was Damar. Apologies. Anyway, let's move on. Um, I want to start with the controversy of the week, which is did or did not did Claire, did she or did she not go to prom? And I just want to say I did not go to my prom in high school. So I was excited to hear that she did not either. It's also not something that I have like any feelings over. Like I'm just like, I didn't go like, who cares? It's not really a thing for me. Um, Nick, given all the information we have, do you think Claire went to prom? This is a complicated question because I think there's two conversations to have here. Um, do I think she, I'm going to take Claire at her word because from what we know is there's a picture of Claire going to a high school dance. And I, I agree. I'm going to take Claire at her word. And the woman whose husband photo is seen in the photo with Claire retracted her statement and said she was wrong. Oh. And she said, I was wrong. It was another dance. It wasn't prom. Claire is right. Oh, well, then here you go. I'm happy. I, I'm happy for Claire. Honestly, also, that's a I, win. But I think it's complicated in a sense because, and I'm sure your wonderful audience and listeners are not the people I'm speaking about, but I think Bachelor Nation has gotten a little out of control. I don't, maybe it's a combination of the pandemic and we're whatever, or cancel culture. But like, I love to snark about the show. You have snarked about me. I have snarked about some of my peers. Yes, sometimes 
feelings get a little razzled, but it's all in good fun of a reality TV show. And sometimes it gets a step further where like this picture comes out and people are like, co like commenting on Claire's picture about like her integrity and you've been, you've been caught or whatever. And it's just like, chill out, you know, like <laughs> it's a, who, okay, if, if Claire lied, let's assume she lied. Let's assume she went to all her proms. I don't care how many of us, which is all of us have like said some like silly, stupid lie. We don't even know why we're lying about it. We yeah, just decided to say it. And you're just like, why did I lie? That's such a stupid lie. Why did I say that? And that's entirely possible in a high pressured stakes environment like The Bachelorette, where you're having 20 conversations with a bunch of strangers trying to find re ways to relate. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, totally. And, and these people are just going after Claire or going after who these other cast members. And it's it's gotten a little bit of like, wow, people. Like, again, snark all you want. Have some fun. Like, it's funny that that picture came out at first. Like, oh, did you really go to Cla Palm Claire? Fine. But like people will just like, it, and wow. I know. It's it's intense. A similar thing happened with Sydney last season. And I actually, Sydney was on the show last week. Sydney Hightower, who went to high school. Uh, I, I recently met her after she did your podcast. She said very nice things. Oh, that's nice. I really enjoyed her. I also really enjoyed Natasha. She's been on two times. Did you meet her as really? well? I did. Really, very, very funny. Yeah, yeah, she's like really fun. She seems like a great hang. Um, I never understood what people were so mad about Sydney. Like she said she was bullied and then people pointed to like one photo of her like getting some kind of accolade in her yearbook. And they're like, she wasn't bullied. And it's like, that's not a photo is not evidence of an entire high school experience. It's very, yeah. it's very weird. How did we get here? I don't, I don't understand. It's like, I, I, like in the quest for receipts, people are like, you're a liar. You had a date one time in high school. Yeah. I mean, Sydney could have won homecoming prom king and every award possible. She could have been voted most likely to succeed and still have been bullied. Yeah. Like there could 100%. have been like one, you know what I'm saying? She could have absolutely been harassed by like a, a litany of people all well, still getting a bunch of ac ha high school accolades that we all know don't really don't mean anything. Matter. Maybe she was bullied for the very reason she got a lot of success for things outside of her control. I don't know, but I know. people need to chill the fuck out. I mean, I, I don't. Uh, I agree with you. R rarely are we so aligned. But I saw you tweeting about this, and I was like, "Yeah, I agree." Like, I I just think that I, I think it leads to something that um, I'm gathering, though I don't feel this way. It seems like many people just really dislike Claire. Are you getting that impression? Well, it it, it was interesting because I thought she was well received. Episode one. Yes. Uh, the COVID stuff played really well, which I don't want to say like it played well because it's such an intense thing. But I liked that dose of realism and like acknowledging the the broader world. Yeah, which yeah, I guess nothing. Not, I don't know if that had anything to do with Claire, but I mean the 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 teaser they keep playing, which you know, does that come next week? Does that come? Who knows? About like this men like that. I think that's it's a next great. Week. It's next yeah, week. She's wearing the same dress. I, yeah, that's a great line. Uh, it comes across as very empowering. We all want to see it. We're, we we love Claire for that, right? Um, it it came off the heels of, of of us hearing some guy saying, "I expected more from the oldest bachelorette," and th and I think people liked her as a result of that. And then you got an episode two, and um, for yeah, I mean Claire is Claire. You know, I I. Well, all the reasons why I was glad she was casted as the Bachelorette, I and I do think early on in every season, people always complain early on about random things. Yeah. Um, and Claire does make decisions that don't always make sense. Sometimes seem a bit dramatic. Claire is dramatic. You know, uh, she has a lot of great qualities, and being dramatic is depending on how you rate that quality you know, is a, a quality of hers. And sometimes, you know, I don't know. It's fun to watch. You know what I'm saying? I, but I do feel, I definitely sense, I agree, I agree with you. Like there was definitely, the audience seemed to uh, almost like, all right, let's just get to Tasha. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I'm enjoying Claire, like as, as television. I, I mean, 
I don't know if like, Claire and I would, would like have fun if we had a, a girls night out together, but I'm also really glad we're not doing 12 weeks of Claire. I think like 12 weeks of justifying why she's still single at 39 and like being like, so what do you know about me? Would be really hard. Really yeah. hard. I mean, yeah, there was definitely a plenty of moments for, I'm just thinking, you know, again, we don't know how they're showing or what's shown, but like the way to, like these guys have no idea what's going on. And Claire's all of a sudden, like, it's their first date. Like, this was the first date. No, and half, it sounds like more than usual, a bunch of guys didn't get to talk to Claire because, yeah. well, because Claire, right. you know? And and now you have a bunch of guys who, have, who haven't, ha, haven't talked to her at all. They don't know what's going on. They're just going with it. And Claire just leaves a conversation with Bennett just to, like, yell at the group. I mean, it's just like, that's fun to watch. I mean, we liked, liked it when Hannah Brown did it, but it was a little early and, <laughs> and, uh, and seemed unreasonable. And then when she sent home Brandon or Brandon, or, I don't know. Brandon. Like, I felt bad for the guy. Um, I, it's funny you say that. There's a couple things here. Let's start with Brandon, though. I think Claire being mad that he didn't study up on her is as bad as him not being able to like fake a conversation or something. What, well, here's what Brandon should have done. He should have like asked a specific question to like redirect the conversation. Like he, instead of being like, when she's like, so what do you know about me? Or like, what, how, did you watch my season? He should have been like, yeah, I've watched it, but I don't want to judge you based on that. Like, what don't I know about you? Or so he's just sort of like, if you were a little bit savvier, he could have redirected it to get out of that. His mistake was just not like playing the game properly. And it was like, Brandon, have you been on a date before? I totally agree. You're absolutely right. I just think, again, that's easier said than done in that in atmosphere. And I, I say that even certainly having done it. And I would like to think that I would, you know, say that as well. But we're, I try to bring myself back to like night one of Andy's season or the first yes, day. I want to hear about that. Tell, what is that like at the first cocktail party? Like, what do they tell you? What do you know? I mean, you don't know anything. <laughs> you know, you, you, like, my first night one, I got out of the limo. I'm pretty sure I blacked out. I, I, you know, literally, I don't know what I said to her. I just was, it was, it, it I thought it went tragically. I went in there, I had a drink. I'm, hanging with the guys, everyone's kind of talking, guys are coming in, then Andy comes in, gives her speech, and then like the night starts. And for two hours, I was just kind of walking around by myself <laughs> aimlessly. And and I was just like, I'm definitely going home tonight. And in fact, I was about to just be like, you know what? Before I embarrass myself, I'm just going to walk out the door and leave. And then, and then I was just, I, I literally had this thought of like, you know what, I'm going to just, try to talk to someone and find out how I can talk to Andy. This is and, so endearing. I wish I'd been and, there. And it was like, you're, but the, the point is like, these guys are so lost and so confused. And to, to say like, you're watching it and, and critiquing this guy, having been a fan of the show and watching all these seasons and be like, come on, man. And I don't know how much these guys have watched the show, but even in that world, it's just very, not what you expect. And Claire is so comfortable in that world and, and so comfortable with just saying whatever's on her mind. And that can be very intimidating in a very intimidating atmosphere. All right. I, I have to say, I, I, I was, my, the, the thing I said this uh, Tuesday, I was most amused and shocked by Brandon trying to talk underneath his breath on camera. That was so weird. I'll never forget it. I'm just like, there must have been a producer lurking that he was like, talk, trying to like, talk to you. That's my personal guess. I don't know. But the second thing is, I actually think that her being incensed that he didn't research her is like, as bizarre. Like, I, I like, it's, it's, just, it's, it's weird to me because it indicates that she's interested in like the outcome of a relationship, but like none of the process, like taking the bachelor and bachelorette out of it. So sort of like, there's such an emphasis on like ending up with the dude. And so, so she's like, hoping he like Googled it to like bypass a lot of like getting to know each other. And that like kind of bummed me out. Yeah. Claire is a very literal person from what I have observed and gotten to know of her. Do you know and her? I, I've met her a handful of times. Um, you never crossed paths on paradise, right? 
No. No, we've never been on the same season or had, you know, I've met her three times all very briefly. Uh, like, here's a perfect example of Claire. Well, the first time, the second time I met her, we were at some of that, a bunch of Bachelor people. And then we, we were at a casino. We were at the, uh, where Moranga? were we? we were at, yeah, we're at the Moranga. <laughs> Real. An LA staple. I, you know, I, I, I look at that moment and think, wow. How did I end up? Things really turned for As the a best. Homeowner. Because, now you're a homeowner. Um, but anyway, we're all playing blackjack, right? Mm -hmm. And out of nowhere, at the table, Claire, and, and there's it's a full table. Bunch of our, you know, Tanner, I think Jerry was there, and, and some other people were there. And then other, like, patrons of the casino. And Claire just looks at me and she goes, Nick, do you hate me? <laughs> out of nowhere. <laughs> out of nowhere. And I was like, what? Huh? No, I don't. I, I didn't. I don't know her at all. Like I've I'd met her once before for five minutes, and I think I actually. I think I'm pretty sure I met her at Andy's AFR, and it was like, oh, you were the villain. I was the villain. We should be best friends. And I was like, I don't really know who you are, you know. And right now, I'm just trying to like get my head on straight. And yeah, it seems like she really wants connection and just wants to skip all of the steps that are necessary to get that connection. Yeah, but that's my read on her. Yeah, and she. Again, I only tell that story because if she's feeling something, it doesn't she matter if she's she says it, she puts it out there. And uh, yeah, and we're, we're, we saw a lot of that on episode two. Um, as um, a man over 30, as I'm a woman over 30, how do you feel with the emphasis on her age? Annoying. In what sense? Well, the thing about The Bachelor is this particular... It, they do this every, you know, Colton, the virgin, every fucking second yeah. virgin. You know what I'm like? Although he, they, he didn't bring it up that much. She brings up her age a lot. Colton didn't bring up his age a lot. It was just like in a lot of promos. And it was virginity? like, you mean his virginity? Yeah. yeah. He certainly didn't bring up his age. I have no idea how old he is. Well, I think he's in 28. In fairness but, to Claire, no. I guess we don't know how much she's been prompted to say that or has she said that or are they choosing to err every time she says that right. versus not. So, but yeah, is it annoying? Sure. Yeah. Like we get it. But that's been her storyline. They they like the hammer storyline home. Of course. And, but is it annoying that Claire is saying that? Or it's yeah, sure. It, like she's 39. She's not like <laughs> she's not dead. Yeah. <laughs> she's not retiring. She doesn't qualify for AARP. <laughs> um but yeah, it's uh, it's a little obnoxious. Uh let me can I ask can I ask you a question? Of course. I'm uh and I, I, I feel like, and I know I am already fatigued by like this, the Dale of it all, mm. because it breaks format so much. Like it's, it's just, it's, 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 it's boring to it's, me. That's it's boring. It's obvious. It's bizarre. It's comical because she's pretending they didn't have a conversation before, which, and I don't care if they've talked, I don't care if they FaceTimed, but like, it just makes them both look more insane. <laughs> um, I can't get over how he was dressing. I just, I, I find, I feel like a lot of the people on the season, Claire included, Chris Harrison included, like kind of like went too heavy on like resort wear. Like they went to the mall when it reopened in their neighborhood and in their area. And they were like, what do I wear to Palm Springs? Oh, resort have, wear. That's what I'm going to go with. No leg to stand on when it comes to fashion on The Bachelor. I, it's such a weird world where like that is, I don't know, for whatever reason, you just don't take any fashion risks whatsoever. Like if I could do it all over again, I'd wear the same thing every day. Je jeans and a t-shirt. It'd be super basic and boring. It would be like, no, when everyone would, it wouldn't attract any attention. You just like, it just doesn't, it reads differently on The Bachelor. Like any fashion risks just look absurd <laughs> I, and i'm not one to talk i've 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 made some poor choices dale just um is boring like he seems like a really nice guy he seems um compassionate he seems excited about claire i guess i just where like, do you what do you where, where do you get boring what's he done I'm, that's interesting i'm not saying he's boring in real life i'm saying he's boring on tv well what is yeah i guess but what is i don't know what has anyone done so well, far we it's just so early I'm, here's who I'm excited about. I, I'm really into uh, Bennett. In, in the in the nine same. to ten days since the show began, I've really talked myself into Bennett, and um, I hope we see more of him of him with Tasha slash like in Bachelor Nation. I think. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I 
I like them too. And my early prediction was, I think people will think they're supposed to hate them. And then they'll really like them because... Yeah, Chris Harrison compared him to Kaylin from Emily's season, who was a villain. That, that's not great. No. For him. But he hasn't he hasn't seen that way to me at all. Um, I think he's just a little more self-aware than that. He also seems like like Kalen didn't make friends. He seems like the guys like him and like he's like kind of like in the mix and like meshing with everyone. He se- yeah. he seems fun. Also, he just seems like he's like down for whatever. He he was the first one to talk to her after the iconic line, and he just he seems fun. I, I'm really into Bennett. Um, I also <laughs> I don't know. I mean, like obviously, Easy's been positioned as a narrator, so I I think like there's there's more um, personality coming out there. I am, I liked Jason on the one-on-one, which was super strange. They did a therapy date. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, oh, my you God. Like, Something I forgot like- to mention. Yes, I like him. But before that, one thing that I meant to mention on Tuesday, I was floored, bowled over, shocked when Claire's voice came on. She was reading the date card, like, letter to that him. Was, that I was, was different. I was like, whoa, we've never heard this before. I was, And it was like a fucking long letter. <laughs> yeah, we're mixing it up. Do you think she wrote it? Yes, I do. I feel like Claire is authentic. What do you think? I you're again. I agree. I think again. Say what you want about Claire, but like Claire, there are some bachelors and bachelorettes who are just like, I don't get it. Like, do that? Can you do that for me? I don't want to do it. Right. And yeah. then there's other, and there's others who are like, take it very literal, take it very serious. And there's again the spectrum of 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 that. And definitely Claire's on the very literal, very earnest, very like, this is my love story. I want to write this. If I'm going to give a gift, I want to pick it out. You know, uh, every step of the way, I think Claire is involved. Yeah, it, it definitely seems that way. This episode is brought to you by Visible. Maybe you've already let your New Year's resolution slip. We all have, but you can still make a two year's resolution with Visible. Right now, you can get a one-line wireless plan from Visible for just $20 per month for 24 months. 24 months is basically four bachelor seasons. That could be four engagements, four broken engagements, so many other couples we didn't see them coming. It's really an eternity in Bachelor Nation. And that's unlimited 5G data powered by Verizon with no annual contracts. Switch now at Visible.com and use the code Visible24. Don't miss out. Offer ends January 31st. New members only, promotional rate with service on the Visible plan. For additional terms and network management practices, see Visible.com. This episode is brought to you by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. All right, it's official. I think I've discovered the ultimate coupling of all time. Like any good relationship, they really balance each other out. One is super sweet, and the other, well, they can be a little nutty sometimes. It is, of course, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, the perfect combination of peanut butter and chocolate. So perfect, some would call it true love. Find Reese's now at a store near you. This episode is brought to you by eBay Authenticity Guarantee. eBay knows that when it comes to jewelry, authenticity is the real gem. When you see the blue check mark that says Authenticity Guarantee, It means your next piece will be carefully inspired by jewelry experts and will always be worth its weight in gold. Whether you're looking to make a statement or build the perfect everyday look, eBay is making sure you get the real deal. With eBay Authenticity Guarantee, you can trust that jaw-dropping piece will always arrive jaw-droppingly real. Ensure your next purchase is the real deal. Visit ebay.com for terms. Conspiracy theory time. By the way, I don't believe that her and Dale spoke before the show. Like Rachel was like, I don't think they did, so... I'm gonna I'm gonna believe it. Um, Why, what is wait? R- Rachel doesn't think they did. So you that's yeah. So based what, well, based based on what? <laughs> I don't know. It was just does uh, she Rachel, have does she have inside information or yeah? Is she said guessing? she talked to Claire about it, and Claire said they didn't. So that's that's what I that's what I believe. But anyway, conspiracy okay. I mean, conspiracy theory time. Okay. Do you think that that a plan was always to bring in Tasha after a few weeks? Or do you think things were going so south with Claire? They're like, we need a plan B or something in between those two. Here's what I think. Yes. And I, I've heard rumblings and rumors from reliable people, not directly in that world, Mm -hmm. but may have been prior. Uh, And I've always said what they're always good at preparing and adapting for anything. Mm. So I think when they casted Claire, 
I think they recognized who they were casting, someone they knew very well, uh, and they were not in any way de uh, delusioned by the possibility that anything is truly possible with Claire. And more than ever, they need to really be prepared for anything. And that possibility included the fact that Claire could quit, they could get sick of her bullshit, uh, they could go in a different direction. So I think when they casted her, they had uh, a lot of discussions about this very scenario and were mm. very much prepared for it. Interesting. And that's how it played out. Interesting. So it was sort of like a disaster preparedness situation. Sort of like, you know, you live in California, so there could be an earthquake. Have an earthquake kit in your car. You know, you've yeah. cast Claire as the bachelorette. We could have a disaster. Have a backup plan. Okay. I heard a rumor that uh, there were discussions about replacing Colton. Oh, interesting. Interesting. At what point? Early enough. Huh. Huh. I'm just doing a little mental inventory of his season, at which point like that could have been. That's interesting. It never happened. I, I, I can't substantiate it, and it might be total bullshit. But I guess I only bring it up because, again, Anything's possible in this world, and they're great at adapting. <laughs> and and uh, every scenario has been discussed and and pondered, and and oftentimes things don't happen, you know. But like they've, this wasn't the first time that they've thought about replacing someone, and then they kind of started to be like, well, what would that look like? Well, how do we execute on that? How do we bring them in? Like, what do we do? You know. So they're just. They're constantly thinking of these scenarios as kind of like, well, what would, how, how, well, how would we do it? So right. that's my guess. Uh, I've heard rumors. I can't, I have no, that's, a, it's more of a guess than anything, but I think it's a good educated one. Okay. I like it. Um, and so how do you feel about the like closed system being in Palm Springs so far? I, there's like a couple of ways that I think it's manifested. Obviously the dates. Um, I believe that someone in the bachelor party Facebook group pointed out we'd be getting a lot of Chris Harrison because they can't bring in other people to like host dates. Yeah, he's working overtime for sure. <laughs> I, I kind of feel like though, if you're Chris Harrison, you're like, well, I'm here. Why wouldn't I work? Like what else is there to do? Yeah. I mean, Chris is, I think Chris has been actively more involved in the show. I think quite honestly, ever since my season, I think he, I feel like he's made a conscious choice to be more involved. Mm. But I, I just feel like in, past couple of seasons you've seen more of chris yeah i think chris has always had the option to do that do as much or as little as he wants yeah and again i'm that, i'm not i'm not speaking on anything other than just as a fan watching the show sure 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 um do you think we'll get any musical performances i'll be sad if not get maybe I'm, i love this the country music you know it's like that's definitely something they can if they're bringing in former alumni which you we know they did i mean it, I, it's, it all depends on does the musical act, whoever they might be, are they willing to quarantine, quarantine and go yeah. through the process and do the test? And I would assume that uh, there are uh, musical acts that would be willing to do that for for airtime. Yeah, I think it's a strong possibility for sure, right? I think so. I, I hope so. I certainly hope so. But um, the, yeah, the, the dates seem low budget. I mean, which sure. I don't mind. I kind of like it. I really like the, I mean, the, the love language seems actually so obvious and it's like, was this the first, you, you would know more than I would, but is this the first time they had a group date that was focused around love languages? I think so. Which by the way, I researched, um, and I also tried, I tried to get the guy who made up the five love languages. His name is like Dr. Gary Chapman. I emailed him to see if he would do this podcast. No response, but I bet he was inundated the day after. I, I wonder like if they gave him hitting the heads up like hey this is the basis for a date but you can take the quiz yourself online to find out what your love language is and yeah. um, I, I subscribe to, i think it's a the the premise of love languages makes a lot of sense he would I'm, be a great guest for uh the nick the vial files yeah I'll, I'll i'll definitely reach out but he probably won't <laughs> respond to me you know i mean the ringer has more pull than than i do i don't know man uh, you're getting some good guests these days uh thanks you're welcome um i i uh i i thought that was like not that different than a date they would have done in the in the real world i uh, visually it's different right it's yeah. just a different vibe but i guess to answer your question whatever it's still like so far i'm very much enjoying this season it's dramatic it's it's different dramatic 
Are we getting sick of Claire a little bit and her antics? Sure, but I still think she's making a great Bachelorette, especially knowing that she won't have to do this. It won't be a whole season of this. But early on, she's providing some like must see yeah. TV. Yeah, and, it's great. Uh, uh, right? So I have no complaints. And um I'm I'm fine with it. I'm I'm really curious how is this all gonna transition. I'm really curious. Uh, do they bring in new guys? How is Tasha going to be? From what I know of Tasha, she's the opposite of Claire in terms of So it's like gonna be like whiplash for us viewers. You know, Claire is uh Claire will speak whatever is on her mind and and Tasha is v- very thoughtful to the point of maybe too safe, right? You know, she'll think it through. How is this going to sound? What are people going to think, et cetera, et cetera? Um, you know, she's very a classy woman, but you could argue like well, are we going to really get to hear what Tasha thinks, you know? And, yeah. you know, so it's going to be so opposite of Claire in that regard. But um, maybe a breath of fresh air. I don't, I don't know. Uh, maybe. What, another thing I, we forgot to mention, um, or I forgot to mention a couple of days ago, Claire burning the dress from Juan Pablo season. Do you think she really, do you think she brought that? Did, did they tell her to bring that? Like, what happened? Is that really the dress? What happened oh, there? Oh, that's a great question. Because she definitely got to keep the dress. Right. right. It was her own dress, uh, I think. No. No, really. They thought- definitely I mean, unless unless Claire had a dress that she bought to the show and said, if I get engaged, this is the dress I'm wearing because mm-hmm. no, they buy the the people who are proposing. I got a suit. Really? Where, I never knew this. Interesting. Yeah, I, I got oh, so a you suit. Don't, okay. So for I, proposal, I got my par- they help you? My parting gift, even though Andy sent me home before that, I got fitted for a suit. Right. I got to keep that. It was like, hey, yeah, your heart nice. is shattered into a million pieces. Here's a Hugo Boss <laughs> suit. You know? And uh, it seems like a really fair trade. <laughs> so so like, yeah, every like Claire got fitted for a dress. That's the dress. She got to keep the dress. It was like, hey, sorry, we crushed you. Uh, this might be a tough season for you. Here's a dress. So <laughs> she definitely got to keep it. And I'm assuming it is the dress. And now did she why she brought it or why they asked for me, you know, I don't, I have no idea, but I'm going to, I mean, I'm sure the internet would have let us know they're so fixated on the stupid prom gate that if it was in fact a different dress, I'm sure the, the internet would be just freaking out right now, trying to take down Claire. <laughs> it um, was kind of hard to tell because it was like folded up. She never really like undid it. I will say the girl loves the one shoulder and she's been rocking it for the last seven years. It's just like, that's her go-to style, I guess. If you got a style, you just go with it. Good for her. Yeah. Good for her. I just thought that was, I thought that was kind of funny. She's just, she's so, um, it's interesting to me that so much of her storyline is like where she's come from, like about her past with Juan Pablo. No mention of Benoit yet. None, none there. But like, right, does, it, does that bother you? No, not at all. I, I'm probably the single biggest fan of Winter Games. I loved it. I thought it was so much fun. But like, no, I like don't, I don't care at all. I think, um, yeah. People's like Bachelor Nations, some people in Bachelor Nations, intensity on like completism. Uh, yeah, or uh, I don't know. Just it's 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 a it's a show, people. Everyone's it's losing a- their mind, Nick. As, as I told you earlier today, <laughs> question the nature of my own reality. Like everyone's just yeah. losing it. You're home, you're on your computer a lot. May, like, may I ask, can I we can I backtrack and ask you a question? Yeah. If uh Rachel's right and your conspiracy theory is correct, and she Dale and her didn't talk. How do you view that relationship? Um, even if they did talk, so like it kind of doesn't matter. Like even if they did talk, they have so little. I don't think they did, but like there's just so little to go off of. Even less than the usual ten weeks of desire and courtship. Um, I, but, I I do think though, they got a lot of time in isolation together right after. Right like after, when, yeah, like, but I, I, I mean, I can make the case that you know they started filming Claire season, or they showed up and then Corona hit, and they're like, "Stop the show!" You know, we got to figure this out. They go for three months. The men are released. She finds like if if her and Dale were talking, I can see how in a quarantine situation where you have n- nothing to do, that Claire and Dale could f- literally fall in love, FaceTiming every day. That's not that's. That makes to- that's what makes a lot of sense. Yes, to me. it's the basis of the show Ninety Day Fiance. Yeah, right. And so they <laughs> show up, and Claire's like, "Fuck the rules! I'm just gonna let people know I'm into this guy." Okay, but if in fact they didn't talk, and she just like stalked his Instagram for three months, and Dale did the same, 
I mean, wow, they're that's that's a little bizarre. Yeah, it's, it's more than a little bizarre. It's like crazy and doesn't. It also just sets, in my opinion, sets a standard so high of like we're gonna have this perfect relationship. It was perfect from this jump that like there's almost no way to succeed because you have no like expectation that there will be challenges or difficulty because you're just like, yep, found each other. We're good. We're done here. Do you think the attempt or the previews that suggest the guys are going to go after Dale and he might get some of a, a villain edit, do you think that will actually be the case? Or do you think that's, you know, clever uh, teaser edit? I think it's a clever teaser edit. And here's why. We have seen almost everything from the Claire promos now. Like what we haven't seen is the is the guys going after Dale and the like the full Claire fighting with someone over like the reason why I'm still single is because I didn't settle for guys like you. So like there's not a lot of meat left on the bone. Like we've got a lot of it already. And so I think that we've only got like we've two max more episodes of Claire just like kind of like gaming it out. So I think that there's like not going to be much of like a tear down of Dale. And I, I think that like we're wrapping this up soon. I'm super curious about how they do that. And also like just on a realistic on a realistic note, the election is November 3rd, right? So we have one more Tuesday before the election. Then the next one is a Tuesday. And so I'm just like, and I, I know that uh, that week, the week of November 2nd, The Bachelorette is on Thursday night. So it's on uh, November 5th. And wait, so, wait, what? Wait, what? <laughs> is the bachelor's on a Thursday night? Yes, the week of the election, because the election's on Tuesday. Yeah, yeah, okay. That's, you, I, no, I'm, my, I'm really, I'm digesting this right now in real time. <laughs> and so I'm just like, is Claire being shown the door on a Thursday night in November when we probably won't have a new president? Like, is that just how it's going to go down? Like, I, I'm, I'm kind of confused, but like, I, I don't think we've got a lot more Claire if I, if based on what we've been given. Yeah, I think you're right. If I had to guess, uh, I think next episode will, uh, end with, a uh, though it'll be, the writing will be on the wall. In that that conversation we we keep seeing with Chris that Claire's having will be the last scene of next episode. You broke the bachelorette, like that scene. Yeah, cut off and to like yeah something like something it'll be around there is my guess. And then like and then Tay Show will be in episode four. Interesting. And so that would be the week of the election. That would suck. It would suck for Tasha if her first episode was two days after the United States vote for an, a new president. That's yeah. I, and it really, and then like, I'm like, I'm having a very meta moment talking to you, knowing that like the last time there was an election, I was in Finland, you know, falling yeah. in, in, in love on a date with Rachel. That was super weird. And probably more than any election in my lifetime, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm nervous about it because I'm, you know, most elections come and go and you just like deal with, with the results. But now it's like, how will America and the world respond to this one? And I, 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 I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know. And to be frank, I can't process it. Like I don't, I, don't I, right? know. I know I mean either. And I'm, uh, and you're right. I think to follow up with a episode of the bachelorette two days Dude, later sucks. might be a little too soon. Yeah. Can we get the whole week? Can we just push it back? <laughs> right? Yeah. Just, like like the, give us some time. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. Like we're already we're putting on a Thursday, huh? Thursday night football. I don't know. And it's, know. it's like two days. Give me the weekend to just figure out how I feel about what's going on in the world. <laughs> I, know. I know it's so true. It's like, it's okay. The show will still be here. Double up one week. What about a Tuesday, Thursday, the week after or something? Which, which they've done. Yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah. Paradise gets back to back nights. I mean, yeah. Let's see. That, I gotta say, ABC. I'm really. That's a weird scheduling decision on their part. Yeah, I, uh, I guess that's just how they gotta fill the time. I mean, also they gotta get this done before Matt season, which airs in January. I think back onto regular schedule. When's it set to? Yeah, but that's that's still two two, two months yeah, away. Yeah, but Nick, we got like ten weeks of the Bachelorette ahead of us. Just timing it out wise, like. Are there yeah. extra episodes of this season as a result of the two Bachelorettes? Not that I'm aware of, maybe. I haven't okay. asked. Yeah, I don't I don't know. Haven't researched. I, I I'm really like I don't I, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going Me on. Me neither. I'm, just, I, I'm, I'm pretty spoiled except for Dale. I'm pretty spoiler free. I have to say I'm really enjoying it. It, it makes yeah, no, I makes I don't know when fun. Claire's come. I know that Claire's coming. I've seen that some of my friends show up. I you know, I you know I know that much. The rest I'm kinda I don't really know. Um, I want to ask you about your rollerblading hobby, roller skating hobby. How's that going? Yeah. 
Uh, roller skating. Yeah, there's definitely a difference. I don't. Yes. I, Rollerblading I, I, is like from 90210 in 1994. Roller skating is like a cool thing that you learned during quarantine. I haven't done it since I've moved. I've been in my new house for about five weeks. Um, and being someone who lived on Venice Beach, I was kind of part of that roller skating yeah. community. Uh, I actually even uh, corresponded with some other people you're, you're seeing on Instagram, and, and they taught me some tricks. I do have a, a rollerblading get-together lined up with a, a, a gal who is incredible. And I started following, and we were going to get together. I think I'm going to have her come over. Because I do have a little place in my backyard that's like a perfect – it's a small area, but to like do some footwork, cool. I think it's a plenty of space. Uh, but I haven't in about five weeks. I did put them on a couple weeks. I was, uh, indulging in some, in some substances and decided to put on the roller skates in the house. Cause I have the type of floor that allows that you to do that. that. That lasted for about 30 seconds and I, and I took them off, but sounds like a throwback to your date at the museum with Raven. It where I, you know, thank you very much. I actually thought about that. I'm like, should I do this here? I'm like, you know what? I did this in the art museum and then it just wasn't <laughs> as much fun. Uh, so I took them it's off. Cause Raven it's wasn't with you. Yeah, that's it. Um, <laughs> and uh, and uh, yeah, I don't know. It's a it's a fun hobby. Why that's not? great. How is your new house? It's great. It's coming along. Um, I've gotten really into large art coffee table books. Oh, cool. So you're living that Tashin life. I literally came from there. Nice. The one at the Grove? Yeah. Uh, no, I, Beverly Hills. Is there one at the Grove? There's one. A little, there's a little hut at the Grove. I don't know if the Grove's open, though. Um, but yeah, uh, it's a great, it's a great store. Then the, the yeah. LA one and the New York one are really cool. Those big, yeah, no, it was really cool. I enjoyed it. Um, I, I bought curtains and, and blinds and I'm doing all the homeowner things. And, and quite frankly, I'm enjoying it. That's great. It's a, it's a good time for nesting. I mean, you're going to be home, right? Yeah. I, I, I hope that you make it out this way soon so I can show I you the place. It definitely will. Definitely will. Will you get me some roller, some roller skates to, to, uh, try on for when I come visit? Yeah, sure. I mean, if you want me to. <laughs> I'll come with my own. Um, Nick, thank you so much for joining me. I just had a thought. I'm going to follow up with you later, but I had a content thought for us related to um, the election. And I that's just a teaser for everyone else. We'll see if it comes to fruition. Great. Yeah. Well, uh, I just can I, I just want to speak to your audience in Batch Nation is I, be well. Take care of yourselves. Care it's of a yourself. tough year. I agree. Um, be you kind know. to Claire, be kind to the guys snark all you want, but just like, it is a show, you know, like everything you see in the show does it in no way reflects them as humans in life. And it is a sliver of who they are. So just, you know, take it easy on Claire and, and Dale have some fun, tease, <laughs> just, you know, stop bowling them over the internet. On that note, have a great weekend, everybody. Talk to you next week. <laughs>